Thank you for listening to our group talk about our process control project, which is on autonomous plant care. Because for anyone who's ever had a houseplant knows that they are very difficult to keep alive. Um, here's the roadmap for what we'll be discussing today. Um, we'll introduce you guys a little bit to our hardware design as well as to our controller design. And then we will discuss our um, project performance, the stability analysis, and then give some of our conclusions that we've drawn uh, after looking at all the data we've collected. Uh, this is our um, process diagram. Um, we are focusing on controlling the light and the moisture levels because those seem to be the two most important variables in plant care. Uh, we will be using three different sensors, including the moisture, light, as well as a temperature sensor. Uh, the temperature sensor is used in a feed forward control um, to account for um, at higher temperatures, plants dry out faster, so that's why we've included that as well. Um, one important note is that all of our sensors take measurements every 15 seconds, and that plays a factor into our results later on. So in order for this project to be possible, we needed a lot of hardware. So we had a Arduino Uno to log all the data and to control the pump. And then we needed another Arduino to actually control the light aspect of the project. Um, we needed a soil moisture sensor to obviously read the soil moisture so we know how much moisture the plant has. A temperature sensor for the feed, uh, forward control like we talked about. It, and we needed a H bridge to control the pump. And we needed um, a, a light sensor to be able to measure how much light we had. And then we also needed the dimmer chip to control the growth light. So for our controller design, we went with a purely design for the watering system um, because it's a fairly simple system with two set points, low and high. And then the low set point turns on the pump for 15 seconds and the high set point will turn off the pump for however long it needs to be off. Um, and then we, like Paige mentioned, we implemented a simple feed forward control with the temperature sensor. Um, so whenever the temperature is warmer, the watering system will go off more often. And then for the lighting system, we did a PI controller design um, because it's more complicated uh, because it has a variable range of set points and we want better control of our dimmer. And we also installed an anti-reset windup so that the air wouldn't accumulate and skew our results. And then for the performance, we were able to dim the light and respond to disturbances and uh, the ambient light from the outside. We we're also able to water the soil when it was dry. So if you look at the graph on this page, you can see that the moisture level drops around 30%, um, and that's our lowest that point. So you can see that it spikes up, and that's when the pump is responding. Um, so the actuator responded to the sensor, which is what we wanted it to do. And we're also able to record data. So this is a graph of our light data. The zero starting point is roughly at 3 to 4 p.m. Um, the plant is set in a western window, so you can see the ambient light from the sun coming down and also the, you know, just the general uh, ambient light from the apartments that the plant is located in. So we can see, that, you know, when it has some uh, other light besides the growth light, it does a decent-ish job of controlling the light at the beginning. Um, I did turn off the lights and that's when it just really started oscillating really bad. Turned the lights back on and it went to being okay at, at controlling the light, but still oscillating quite a bit. And then you can see where there's that big chunk of where it just keeps oscillating is when it was nighttime and we turned off all the other lights so there would be no disturbance variable. And it just couldn't contain itself and kept oscillating back and forth throughout the night. And then you can see, you know, daytime happens, you know, we flip on the lights, people start doing things in the apartment, and it starts to be able to control better with a little bit of disturbance variable in the light. And you can see towards the end, it actually got quite good when it comes back around that afternoon sun comes in and it hits the light and it would pretty much just turn off the dimmer light. And we also had another issue where a single bad reading of moisture could cause the watering cycle to turn on. And so in order to prevent this from happening and overwatering the plant, we actually used an average of the last three readings for moisture in our controller loop. And that seemed to correct that issue. And so our conclusions from this project is we were able to achieve adequate control, uh, but we had some instability, especially in the light controller. And some further improvements uh, we'd love to make is to refine the gain values and the calibration values uh, to get better sensor data and better control. As well, we'd love to use an Arduino mega board instead of two Arduino Unos. Um, we'd love to fix the wiring configuration to avoid accidental disconnections. 
Using dimmable DC power instead of AC power would give us a little bit better control over uh, different light levels. And then we'd love to account for the difference between day and night in the set points. Thank you, uh, Dr. Hengren, for teaching us process control, and thank you all for watching our presentation.